And for more on this and the controversies, Mike Bak Bak uh, Bako, he's the sports editor for DailyNational.com. Mike, it's good to see you. Um, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but I'm mm -hmm. clicking through Google, which you probably shouldn't be, and pretty much all the articles are, you know, are highlighting the corruption issue. It's it's the, the issues, but. That said, and I'm going to talk about some of the bright spots later, but let's start with the controversy. Why has this been so controversial with Seth, as you just heard me saying, admitting that this was a mistake? How can that be? Well, if you go back to a little over a decade ago when, the, when FIFA announced that not only would Qatar host these games, but four years ago, Russia hosting the games, there was a lot of head scratching that was going on. Two countries that really had no international soccer history that had a really a reputation for doing underhanded things. And certainly as the years have gone on, whether it be Sepp Blatter talking about it or just other officials talking about it, there were some bribery charges. Certainly the 2018 Russia games went off. A lot of that same consternation that's going into the start of these games. Sides of protest talking about uh, unfair working conditions. But once the game started going on, that was pushed into the background. This year, there's a lot of groups, like you mentioned, Amnesty International, other international rights groups that are trying to keep front and center. But if you're watching here in the United States and if you're watching on Fox Sports and some of the other outlets, they don't have their way to say they're only covering what's on the field. There's other entities like us to cover what's going on off the field. So they're going to keep it to soccer. And I think the majority of Americans watching will get the lay of the land on this story, this very important story that's almost being underreported with the severity of it. But once the games start, so much attention will be going on on the field. The Danish Football Federation um, wanted to wear pro-human rights uniforms for their, for their um, the training, the practicing before the, the big match and FIFA rejected it. Why is FIFA so sensitive to this? I mean, why not just let the people and the people that are coming to this country, to their country, to celebrate this huge event, just just, just let them do the thing? Why the, why the sense of not letting anybody say that or do that? Well, the Qatari government. For, for one, not only the Danish team, but there's a sort of a grouping of 10 other European teams that wanted to wear One Love armbands. The Australian team wanted to have uh, a sign of protest. But these are all talks that are going on. I mean, some of these organizations have gone so far as to tell LGBTQ fans that are showing up not to fly rainbow-colored flags. At a certain point, the Qatari officials are trying to put their best face forward sort of thinking about the live golf in a sense that they want to have their sporting brand become their public relations brand. Now, will any of these athletes take it to the next level? Will there be on-field protests? Will they say something in a post-game press conference? There's just so much riding on this from a nationalistic standpoint, wanting to win for your country, but also billions of dollars at stake as well. So it'll be interesting to see what happens once things are going. Will someone cross that line and do an on-field protest or protest before the games? Mike, do you think it was a mistake to host it here? Well, I think when you think about the everything leading up to it, so many questions raised, talking about all the migrants that have come over, 90% of the workforce that are working on these seven new stadiums, hundreds of billions of dollars are migrant workers. Over 200 of them have died, probably even more that have died. We just don't know about it. Um, so there's a lot of corruption that's going on into this. Certainly once FIFA leaves, these stadiums will probably go to rust and to dust. There's not going to be major soccer matches that are coming here. So this is very much a money grab for FIFA. That's what they're known for. They're not known for their ethics. Certainly over their, their decades of this, whether they be on friendly ground countries or even when they're coming to the U.S. or when they did it in 94, there's always sort of a, a whiff of impropriety to so much of what they do, but there's just so much money to be had. There's so many fans right. um, that, that will still look over that and will still come and watch the matches in Qatar. Back in the day when we were younger, ticket tickets were how they made money. Today, though, it's all mm -hmm. about big, global, national television contracts. I and mean, they could have this at a, any neutral site in the world, and I think they would make just as much money. But there is some silver line to this. There was talk of boycotting,
but at the same time, I read they sold nearly three million tickets, which appears to be better than expected, even to people in Qatar, the United States, from all over the world. They're still buying tickets and they're still attending. So there really isn't the boycott that people have been talking about because they seem to be buying tickets still. They seem to be buying tickets still, and the loudest voices on these boycotts are, are going to be the international rights organizations. Certainly, there's going to be some level of fan that's going to look at this and not cross that line to, to go because they don't want to give their money. Honestly, one of the biggest things that they were worried about was just the travel for people to come and the accommodations, including in those seven stadiums that they built. They built close to 100 different hotels to house all of these fans. So it was a huge gamble to bring this there. And like you said, 3 million uh, fans wanting to come. So that's a, that's a big success. And the way that FIFA goes, whether there's corruption, whether it comes out now, whether it comes out 10 years from now, it will go on. It will still be popular. The rights fees will still be there. So that's the drumbeat of international soccer and FIFA. Well, we certainly don't want to take away the excitement that's building for everybody rooting for their own, you know, countries in this huge tournament. The players have trained for a lifetime for this moment. Um, so hopefully we'll get to that point and this will be successful. Mike, good to see you as always. Thank you.